G'day, it's Matt from Crank Engineering and in this video uh, I want to talk about soldering connections for wires and connectors uh, as opposed to crimping. We'll talk about crimping in another video but today I want to talk about soldering and what you might need and how you might do it. This is my way of doing it. I'm sure there'll be plenty of experts out there that'll tell me there's better ways but that's alright, this works for me. So what are you going to need to do a soldering job? Um, and what's the purpose? The purpose of soldering is to join you know, two pieces of metal together using you know, a bit of heat and a filler. A bit like welding I guess. Um, so what do you need? Soldering iron. Um, I've got a couple of different ones here. Um, this is quite a small one. This is uh, 15 watts. Uh, the one on the bench is 25 and this one I think is 70. And you can see from the tip size um, they've got a, they're a bit different. Small ones I guess good for electronics. I find this one takes a little too long to heat up this 15 watt so I end up buying the bigger ones on the bench to 25. So that's currently plugged in and warming up. It's on a stand so it doesn't burn my wooden bench. Um, what else are you going to need? Now for wiring or for soldering connections on a motorcycle you're going to need some sort of solder um, and you need a 60-40 tin lead mix. This is the stuff you need, 60-40. Look for the 60-40 alloy, 60-40. Um, this old packet here says, still says 60 tin, 40 lead. This one, 18 tin, 80 lead. No good. Get rid of that. That's no good. So any of this stuff the, is the go. So we'll use a bit of this. Now the other thing that I find very useful, and in fact I don't think I can solve it very well without it, is um, soldering fluid. It's like a flux. So zinc chloride, 40%. Um, just a flux. It's a, it's a liquid format. I've got a couple of different ones here. They do the same job. And it's just a kid's paintbrush to paint it on. And that's really to clean the, the metal and to uh, promote the flow of the solder onto the metal. So I'll show you how they use that. I'm gonna make, um, we'll make up some test leads. We stripped out some wire in the last video. So I'm going to make some test leads out of this wire. I'll show you how I solder the connections. So I've been to my local J-Car electronics place and I really wanted some larger alligator clips than this. These are 26 millimeter. Um, I wanted some large ones but they're out of stock of the 32 so I bought these anyway. So I'm going to make some, some test leads out of these guys. These are a buck fifty each so so far a total investment not very much. So let's have a look at these and what we might do to get it set up. So I take the plastic off. Oop, there goes one fine on the floor. I can feel the heat coming off that soldering iron, so that's pretty much ready to go. So what have we got here? So these are just an alligator clip like this um, with a plastic or a vinyl insulation cover on them. So um, what we have to do is solder the wire connection in here. And I'm going to use these tabs, bend these tabs over and use them to hold the wire. So technically I suppose you could just push those wire tabs down onto the um, exposed metal, like this. So I guess you could um, technically just push that down onto there. Now, not really my preferred method of doing it because all that is holding it together is the pushed over crimped metal on the conductor and I think that's a bit unreliable after a bit of movement and vibration and pulling and tugging it's um, going to come off. So I'm going to solder these on. I'll do a couple of practice ones first to show you how, what, how this works and what happens. So um, I've just stripped the ends off some, some just some standard um, automotive wiring. I'm going to twist the ends just to keep them together. And I'm going to um, I mean, there's a little vice here now. I'll just move the camera back, put it down a bit too. Nice. You can use these little helping hands you can buy from your electronic shop. I just use this guy just um, when you're soldering. Typically, you need three hands. Okay. So first step, uh, and what we're going to do here is we're called tint. We'll, we'll tin the solder connection. So we're going to prep this um, connection by coating it with solar. So all I do is I put a bit of flux in the, the lid, just paint a bit on, 
that's it and now the idea here is you heat the metal up to the point where the solder just flows straight onto it so I'm going to hold this um, I'll put this near my face so I can feel the heat coming off this thing so it's hot pretty hot so I'm just going to hold this on here and what's going to happen is the soldering flux is going to start to evaporate when it gets hot and hopefully not long after that There we go. Okay, so we've just tinned that joint. I'll do it at the other end. And I'll bring the camera a little closer. I'll zoom in a bit. So we've just, if we have a look, compare these two. I haven't quite caught the end of it. So we've got one end nicely coated. And the other end still bare. So we'll do the same thing on the other end here. Now, clearly, if I hold the soldering on here for too long, I'm going to melt the insulation. So I really am trying to do this as quick as possible without damaging the insulation on the wiring. So let's just bring the camera over. I'll zoom in a little bit closer. That's not too bad. All right, a bit of flux. Solder at the ready. So I've got the soldering iron under the wire and the solder on top and you can see how the solder all of a sudden once the wire gets to the right temperature the melting temperature of the solder once they uh, get that hot then the solder just flows straight on so the purpose of that flux is to help that solder flow if you didn't have that, sol that flux there this just wouldn't work at all oh, let's go back okay so that's the general idea so let's um, set up and do some of our uh, wiring on our test leads. So again, this stripped out of a appliance lead of some description I had on the last video. So I'm going to take the ends off here. I don't really care how long they are. I'll just use the whole piece. Take both the ends off. Now, one thing I should have done is probably put the put these uh, insulation insulation ends on first, would have been a little easier before I actually cut them, but I mean, they're going on alright. So one at either end. I'm going to take the um, alligator clip out, push this guy on. Now I don't want these to get melted, so I'm just going to push those two, push them into the centre, get them out of the way, and we'll worry about work on our ends here. Now I've got to think of a smart way to do this, hold it all together and get it um, get it together. So I think I'm going to hold the alligator clip in the vise and um, solder like that. There's not a lot of room in there, there's quite a small clip so I may even end up soldering it back here. I think I'll do that. Larger clips would be a little easier. Okay, so we'll put the alligator clip in the vise just to hold it. I'm going to do it up too tight because I'll crush these alligator clips. There we go, like that. Okay, so first I'm going to tin the ends of my uh, wire. I can cheat and use the stand that's here. Cheat a little bit, not a lot. Still visible, yep. Okay, that's one end. That's the other end. Okay, so now I've got to prepare my um, alligator clip and I'm just going to basically paint a bit of flux on there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
melt some solder onto the alligator clip now uh, with the intent of just coming back and then putting the wire on there and then melting the solder to get them to join together without actually adding a whole lot of solder at that point. So now there's quite a bit of metal here, this can take a while to heat up, yeah, a few seconds. So we um, apply some heat, I normally do it from underneath. And now we just wait until we start to hear the solder evaporating off. There we go. Okay, so we apply some solder. Alright, there we go, we've got a big melt there. Take my soldering iron off and let that solder melt. Oh, sorry, let that solder solidify. And what I'm going to do is come back. So I'm going to hold the soldering iron on the alligator clip, remelt the solder, push the wire in, and then remove the soldering iron and let it cool. Okay, there we go. Pretty good connection. I'll push the crimp over in a minute. Come back and do the other, the other clip. That's one. Now don't forget to put your um, insulation on, or if you're using uh, heat shrink, make sure you put your heat shrink on first. Okay, so a bit of flux. Okay. Okay. Now let's come back with the wiring. Remelt. Okay. Right, so let's zoom back out again. Out. All right, so we've got our two our two uh, alligator clips soldered on. So obviously, what's holding the wire to the clip is the solder. So, I mean, if I pulled hard enough and yanked it back and forth, I'd probably break it. But definitely, it'll last longer than if I just crimped it over with. Um, with these little ends of the clip. So I need a pair of pliers just to push those over. So I'll go grab those and be back in a sec. Okay, so I've just got a pair of needle nose pliers and I'm just gonna push those over gently. They're not really doing much apart from providing a little bit of secondary Attention. Okay, so now that I've done that, let me get it all the way out. Yep. So I'll grab the grab the covers, and what I'm going to do is uh, hold that open, push the cover back over, hold that open, push the cover back over. Okay, there we go. One test lead all done ready to go. So I'll make a couple more of those in a minute. Same process. So we can use that same soldering process to um, to join wire too. So I'll um, just show you here this piece that we tinned before. So if I had two pieces of wire I had to join I can use the same process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend I'm going to solder this together. Well I am going to solder together. I'm going to put some heat shrink on here as well and um, this is obviously white, easy shrink, I don't know where I got it from. Pretty sure these numbers uh, means d diameter 4, so it starts at 4 mil and it shrinks down to 2. Don't quote me on that, I just that's what I've figured out. So normally what I do, if I'm heat shrinking a joint, um, you know, that's probably an overlap of say a centimetre, so I'll maybe cut it one centimetre longer on either side, so say 3 centimetres. So I'll just cut a chunk of this off the end here, like that. That's all you got to do. Now, if I was wiring this to a wiring a joint up, I'd be putting this heat shrink on 
first, doing the soldering, and then coming back with the heat shrink. Now, obviously, I've got two loose ends, so I don't have to do that at this particular time. So, let's get this going. A couple of ways you can do this. This is one way, if you've got a bit of space. The other way I like to do this on, for joining wires is um, take the two ends, take quite a bit off the end as such, and I would sometimes like to twist them together just to get the conductors connected somewhat and also it makes this joint a little bit thinner when it's finished so I might set it up like that and I'll stick it in the vise and I will hit it with some flux and all I'm going to do now is hold the soldering on underneath hit it with the um, solder and that's pretty much it A bit of uh, copper here to heat up, so it's taken a bit longer. Just gotta be patient. There we go. Okay, as soon as I've got solder on there, I'll, I try and get the heat off straight away just so I don't melt the insulation. Now, if you're dumb enough to touch this, that will be pretty hot and it's a little bit soft, so. Um, that's why I'm trying to do it as quick as possible. Right, so next step, then you come back and slide your heat shrink over the joint and try and get it in the center somewhere. And then you need to hit this with some, some heat to shrink it. So um, soldering iron really doesn't work. You need more like a cigarette lighter or a match. I'll see what I've got in my drawer here or a little torch of some description. Move this camera just to smooch and see what's in the drawer. Okay, so I've got so I have got a little gas um, torch here, so this works pretty well. So I'll get this guy going. All right, a bit of flame. Now, if you put it straight on, you're going to burn it. So really, just trying to apply a bit of heat. A little bit away from it, there you go, you can see it shrink, flip it around, get on the back. That's it, job's done. So, good wire connection, protected from the elements for the heat shrink. So, um, one way to connect wires. Now, obviously you can't do this when you're inside a motorcycle headlight or under the dash of a car, so usually this is really for bench work. Maybe you're building a harness or a replacement part of a harness and you're doing it on the bench. Well, this is a good way to do it. So anyway, that's it for soldering. Hopefully that was helpful and um, we'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.